Hello everyone, and welcome to my talk on observability and modern applications. Now, my name is Devin Lawler, and I'm the Director of Sales Engineering here at Epsigon. I have nearly a decade of experience architecting distributed applications and solutions in both more traditional on-premises environments and in cloud-native, cloud-first environments as well. I've been working in observability, ops, and monitoring for quite a number of years now, and I'm excited to talk about observability with all of you today. Now, this here is me about 15 minutes after my wedding that wrapped up this past November. Uh, you know, thankfully, we were able to just eke out COVID by a few months. Now, today, we'll really discuss four main topics. Old school approaches to both architectures and monitoring them, common challenges DevOps teams face in 2020 and beyond, and how to best apply observability in modern distributed applications, as well as a little bit of history on where distributed tracing began. And then lastly, the pitfalls of developing your own observability solution rather than relying on a managed service. Now, monitoring in more traditional monolithic environments comes with less complexity in many ways, but it really does create unique challenges as well. Engineers and DevOps professionals have to be more reliant on outputting verbose logs, which really means an engineer also needs to account for this when developing an application. Host data can help pinpoint when an issue began, but will lack context as to where in the application, requiring deep transaction tracing with manual instrumentation to be able to better determine where the issue lies. Beyond this, you have the ability to collect independent metrics, but these two can lack the critical context to logs, host level metrics, as well as the in-process transactions. When you need more debug data, you of course have to turn to logs in traditional environments. This too can mean having to turn up the level of verbosity and then wait for reoccurrences of a new issue. Now, manually sifting and searching through thousands to millions of log lines is never an easy nor a fun task to complete. Now, I'm not going to tell you that logs aren't needed at all or that troubleshooting with them is a futile endeavor. Logs can absolutely be an incredibly powerful tool within your troubleshooting arsenal, but they do come with an added cost, both monetarily as well as operationally. Logs oftentimes require yet another agent to be installed and managed within your environment, and oftentimes you're having to define local grok patterns or regexes to hopefully match on specific patterns within those logs. Furthermore, they can be incredibly expensive when accounting for data egress costs out of cloud environments to log aggregators. You also have to hope that developers have accounted for properly logging out that data that will be helpful when troubleshooting which means there's a huge potential for spotty troubleshooting data or conversely, too much data causing paralysis from overanalysis. Logs can also lack key context to critical metrics, events, and traces requiring engineers to manually search and scroll through millions of lines to hopefully spot the why and then the where of a failure. Before the days of distributed tracing, I myself also remember spending hours of my time scrolling through logs, searching for potential exceptions, and hoping I'd be able to spot that proverbial needle in the haystack. Now, the missing context is absolutely critical in modern environments that come with highly distributed architectures. Even in monoliths, this context becomes extremely difficult to provide as applications can be built based upon hundreds to thousands or even millions of lines of code which all needs to have the correct logging accounted for within it. The challenges are also felt across the organization as neither engineers or DevOps professionals have a holistic view into what exactly is running in production, how to monitor and observe the health across all of the various applications components from, with the, uh, from the services themselves to the backend databases and of course beyond. That troubleshooting becomes massively problematic when shifting to highly distributed architectures. Metrics and logs leave large gaps in not only the ability to troubleshoot, but also monitor the end-to-end -end health of the distributed services and components that make up these modern applications. Now, at this point, it's highly likely that you've all heard of the three pillars of observability. Now, this is oftentimes called MELT, which is metrics, events, logs, and traces. Metrics have been utilized by ops for years now. They're a great way to aggregate data to visualize over time. They really only provide a small picture for, for uh, troubleshooting though. Raw metrics on their own also cannot connect the business impact of an issue. 
if you simply can see that you have uh, say 5% of your transactions returning a 500 error, you need to be able to link that to context of failed actions within your application. Logs and events have also been around for ages, and they're oftentimes the first place a developer will dive into for troubleshooting. However, they're time consuming and oftentimes lack context to a specific point in time, and they of course require a considerable amount of manual effort. Furthermore, they're great at helping debug an issue, but not at surfacing up the problem in real time. Tracing has gone through multiple iterations over the years, but hasn't quite been figured out yet. Tracing oftentimes has been a very difficult, time-intensive effort, which requires developers to instrument and define spans and segments manually. This slows down developer velocity and oftentimes accounts for up to an additional 10 to 25% of, it, of uh, developer time, which means less time working on the business critical projects, which truly drive the, the uh, revenue. Context is always key with any type of data point though. So how can we ensure that we're correlating metrics with logs and traces? And how do we further correlate that data between all the distributed services within your environment? And how can we do this in one unified view? Now, surely there has to be a better way. Now, if we look at the direction that application development as well as architecture has gone over the last two decades, we've seen a massive shift away from really the more traditional on-premises monoliths to a later adoption into service-oriented architectures, which really began breaking down those massive monoliths to further shift to host-based distributed microservices, to now when we can see architectures that are cloud-first, cloud-native, leveraging highly distributed architectures across abstracted managed solutions and services. Now, over 80% of enterprises today are in various stages of adopting cloud native architectures for their ability not only to improve application optimization, but rather also efficient uh, for efficiency and the ability for applications to scale more quickly while no longer needing to manage all of the underlying infrastructure. To that end, distributed environments are much more agile than monoliths. However, these environments also are increasingly difficult to monitor as well as troubleshoot as you no longer have a single server to manage and go to whenever an issue arises. So modern applications touch dozens to thousands of entities, which really can include intermingled third-party APIs. Also, the monitoring tools we once relied on are now ineffective at providing the detailed troubleshooting data that engineers and DevOps need to be efficient with their jobs. Epsigon was designed to help teams pinpoint issues and become proactive in their observability so they can really focus on what matters most, that being the business. And with that, modern solutions, as I mentioned, come with highly distributed architectures and leveraging only logs and metrics are simply not enough. Even traces on their own will leave, uh, will leave you missing a large portion of the key information necessary to pinpoint the needle in the haystack that is the issue your end users are seeing. Bytecode instrumentation, while sometimes absolutely necessary, can become a bottleneck in your microservice environments. You never want your monitoring solution to be the reason your end users are suffering from degraded performance. The deep transaction tracing it can provide is necessary in monoliths, but it provides ops and engineers with limited value in modern architectures. Beyond this, Distributed tracing, while absolutely critical, often comes with a high developer effort to define those spans and segments within code, manually instrument for metrics, or manually identify and correlate critical metric and log data with those traces. Traces do paint a unique picture, but without the payload, metrics, or logs to augment the trace details, you only see where a failure occurred, but not why. Now, I'm sure everyone here today is hearing a lot about tracing. Now, Many monitoring vendors offer some form of distributed tracing and even many service meshes are now building in support for it. There are also dozens of open source solutions, some of which are born out of huge enterprises. However, let's step back and discuss where it began and why. Distributed tracing was born out of Google over a decade ago, and it allows engineers to trace the specific path that a request makes through services. In effect, it helps shine a light on that needle in the haystack that logging or metrics alone can miss. Just because that application is made up of 15,000 services doesn't mean a request will travel through every single one of them. At best, it will travel through a fraction of those services. 
And beyond this, distributed tracing becomes a fantastic way to start determining where in your stack time is being spent. If it's taking two seconds for a response, is that due to time being spent in a database query? Or is the service taxed on memory and unable to be as performant as we'd like? With distributed tracing, you'll also find frameworks like Jaeger or Zipkin. And more recently, some order was brought to this landscape with the introduction of open telemetry and open tracing. These are standards and frameworks to be followed and utilized. Though while immensely helpful in pinpointing issues in highly distributed environments, they do come with significant developer effort, slowing down that key developer velocity that we hope for. Furthermore, these oftentimes lack the visualizations necessary to trace the exact path a request travels, limiting you to flame or waterfall graphs for troubleshooting. Additionally, they lack key context with metrics and logs, and they don't necessarily provide you with the ability to search for and identify specific data within API calls. Observability should be top of mind for every organization by now, but it should not commit the expense of the business or developer velocity. Epsigon takes a fully automated approach with our instrumentation with minimal maintenance requirements. Our agents can collect data from any component within your stack, whether a service is running in a container, a function as a service, or a traditional VM, while stitching together transactions through databases and middleware components, without requiring separate agents pointed at these components to monitor them. We're able to do this all with rich context across Melt and allow you to search the full payload or for any custom tags and attributes. Observability should not only tell you that something has gone wrong, but pinpoint that where and why to help you reduce your mean time to detection and further reduce your mean time to resolution. Some of the benefits our many customers are finding are reductions in application error rates, and by being able to pinpoint issues quicker, they have a significant reduction in their time spent troubleshooting. With this in mind, our customers have the added benefit of being able to ship features faster and without the need to manually instrument every segment of their application, we help to improve efficiencies across the various technical organizations. As you start mapping out your journey to observability, identify the key business goals and key performance indicators you would like to measure against. Understand your application architecture and your approach to instrumentation, whether it will be ma uh, manual or something managed for you. Ensure that you can easily and painlessly try a new solution within your environment and that it will effortlessly integrate across your varied and complex ecosystem. So, to summarize what we've discussed today, modern applications are more complex than ever, and simply monitoring basic metrics is not enough. Distributed tracing is absolutely critical to find that needle in the haystack across your stack, and tracing acts like the glue between metrics and logs, but that tracing should not commit the expense of engineers or ops professionals. It should be as automated as possible. And while off-the-shelf solutions have their time and place, focus on the business itself rather than scaling and managing yet another in-house solution that isn't directly adding to the revenue. Now, thank you all for your time today. As a special offer, please do head to epsigon.com slash scaleupday. Once you start a free trial and send your first trace, we'll send you our cloud observability drone. Now, one in 10 individuals who do sign up will be receiving a free pair of Bose noise-canceling headphones. Thank you all again for your time today. If you have any questions whatsoever, we'll be keeping an eye on the chat in the lounge.